and we make a promise to each other that we're only going to tell the truth. So then I went inside and I saw my dad upstairs. I saw a bunch of blood, like a puddle of blood around his head. Did you go anywhere else in the house? No. I went upstairs and I saw him and then and I cried right there and I was laying down with this crying. I think might have done that. I don't know, some of that though. There's some people down the street that are pretty pretty bad people and all the smoking and driving pretty fast down the road in a blue car. When you shoot a gun, um, some of the powder comes off of it and comes on the clothes. Were any guns shot yesterday? Um, I don't know, maybe they shot it in the house. Mm -hmm. And I was wearing the same clothes, and maybe mm -hmm. he got on my clothes. Because mm -hmm. those guys could shot in the house and make some smoke. Mm -hmm. And I could have walked into it. So we wouldn't find a whole bunch on your clothes yesterday? I don't know. But I wasn't shooting any guns. If you shot a gun yesterday, it would be important that you told us that you shot the gun, because we're going to find the house. So we, we I, really need to I know. I think I might have shot the gun. I went upstairs, and then I saw my dad. And then I and then I got the gun, and then I fired it at my dad. He was on the ground, and then um, I reloaded it. Just when how many times do you think you fired the gun? I think twice. How many times did that gun shoot him? I think twice. I think um, I think I shot my dad because he was suffering. I think I think I thought I he was suffering. Okay. So I might have shot him. That makes sense. Okay. I didn't want him to suffer. Did you shoot your dad? I think so. Did you shoot him because you were mad at him? So? Do you think so? Well, how often do you get in trouble? Most of the time. You get in trouble a lot? For what kind of stuff, huh? Um. For lying? For lying? But you told the truth right now, didn't you? You said you wanted to talk to me. What's going on? I'm crazy and I did it. You did what? I killed Julie and I killed Sam. Okay. Uh, tell me how you uh, you killed Sam. Two shots using oh. my father's gun that I had. And your motive behind uh, uh, killing Sam was? Money and insanity. Money and insanity. Okay. <laughs> Tell me about uh, uh, the Sam incident and what you did. Um, I told him that I needed to move some stuff from the theater. I said you need to bend down and help me lift this thing up. And when he bent down, I grabbed the gun. I never really fired the gun before, so I pulled it back and I shot him. Okay. Is there anything that you said to Julie prior to shooting her? No, I didn't. I had. Um, I got her in. I was downstairs in my apartment. I was still text messaging. That was Sam's phone you were using? Yes. Okay. Sam's phone. What, what sort of text messaging were you doing back and forth? I was saying, you need to come over tonight. You need to come over tonight. What, what did you say to Julie? What? Julie was wearing like a crown tiara. She had just come from her brother's. I had said, like, um, Sam had just called me and he was going through some stuff. She said, yeah, me too. I said, well, I have a key. Let's go in. I opened the door. I let us in. And then, um, I just went to the bathroom real quick because I was really nervous. I loaded the gun again. And? I went back out into the hallway and then said, oh, by the way, did you see this in Sam's bed? And I said, read, lean over, look at it right there. And when she was leaned over, I put two bullets in the back of her head. Okay. When did you feel you had to, to kill uh, Julie? What was the rationale behind that? It was going crazy. No, but seriously. Seriously, to cover up Sam. And so I well, why? How would that cover up Sam? To make it look like he was on the run and he did. He was the one that did it. Right. It was good. It reached a point to where I couldn't even believe that I was doing this. I, I, I don't know. I don't know.
I didn't like Caleb Harrison. I didn't like the way he treated my kids. I didn't like hearing all the horrific stories. It was an awful family. They treated the children like shit. And I and Melissa had to live with it every day and I couldn't watch Melissa's attitude and how sorry she was for everything that was going on. And I'm telling you right now that Melissa Merritt did not know anything until after it was done. What did you do? I killed Bridget Harrison and killed Harrison. How did you kill Bridget? I knocked on her door. She opened the door. I pretended to have a letter to give to the children. She refused the letter, so I then forced my way into the house and I attacked her. What did you do? I hit her a couple times. I then proceeded to squeeze her neck. So she stopped breathing and laid on the floor. I never meant to find her. I never meant to find her. That's not the plan. That's not what I wanted. I figured that she would, someone would come home or Caleb would come home and find her. I didn't expect for her to come to the house. I didn't think that was going to happen. I know that. As for Caleb, I snuck out in the middle of the night. Melissa had no idea. I laughed, I went there. I got into his house. Proceeded to go up to the bedroom. chest and when he sprung up we began to struggle I threw him into the shelving unit beside his bed he tried to bribe me with money I didn't speak to him I just knocked him to the ground and I proceeded to choke him him to tell us he did it. Nobody. I've been doing this since 1978. And you're one of the best, if not the best I've ever seen. He. How did this come to be, man? Does the word monster come to mind? Pardon? Does the word monster come to mind? He's told. Tell me about this monster. One minute you're a person like you are, the next minute you're not. I think you're tired of this monster. I know you're tired of this monster. If you want to see him, okay. We want. What kind of tools did you bring with you for the monster brain? One case it was a fishing knife. What case was that, gentlemen? Got your hands off of a fishing knife? How about Donna? Pocket knife. What about Catherine?
I'm wanting you to explain to me that you wanted to hurt Michelle. I want you to explain to me what you felt like you had to do to protect Caden. So I want you to be honest with me and tell me what happened. She got up and um, I got up and um, she's getting dressed and she's finishing up and she's still yelling and Caden's hiding. I grabbed her and I broke her neck. Okay. And I threw her down and got Caden's to call my parents. And then when I came back, I just got rid of her. Where did you get rid of her? She's in Midland. Okay. Do you know where? Now, would you be willing to take us there? Yes. Because I, I look. I can't live with this anymore either, man. I know. I know. I wanted to tell Doctor Phil, but hey, man. It wasn't. It wasn't. A, it, wasn't a, it wasn't. I just grabbed her, and I mean, I, Tom, I. I don't want to kill myself either. To get to not be prosecuted for this, but I felt dead inside already. Let me tell you something, Mark. Number one. <laughs> I don't have anything where else. I didn't have anything else to do. Look at me, my friend. Look at me. I'm sorry. Um, give me the death penalty. That's fine. Look, look I deserve me. it. Mark, look, I'm proud of you. Life is um, over with anyway. Your your life's not over with, Mark. Mark. Listen to me, man. Listen to I me. lied to everybody. I don't want to do it. Listen, listen to me. Listen to me. Your life is not over. And you know why? <laughs> You've got Caden. <laughs> I'll never see him uh, again. You will. You will. Don't kill me in prison. No, no. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me, Mark. Look. Here's what I want you to focus on. I want you to know this, and I want you to look me in the eye. I'm proud of you. It takes a real man to stand in here, sit in this room, and talk with me, and talk about something that he's done that is so egregiously wrong. Let me tell you, it does. And then she takes another pull, and then I turn, and then she blows it. So when I'm about to say something, it just goes deep within. So I'm like, <gasps> you know, and I'm like, okay, you know, and I'm like, just give me, you know, a minute. Because stuff was just not, you know, seeming right at the time. And I was like, just give me a minute. I just get up, go on the couch, you know. Um, she was like... So she's sitting in front of me, but she's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? You know, still smoking, still blowing the smoke in my face. So I was like, Linda, please, I just need 10 minutes. That's it. I was like, I don't feel good right now. I was like, I think it's from a contact, you know. So fucking what? You know, and then she's just like, fuck this, fuck that, you know. And then she was like, what are you, stuck on stupid? You know, but this is like, fun, you know, funny to her. And she doesn't look the same to me. Because it's like now my mind is like in shutdown mode. You know, she just looked like really evil. You know, she didn't, she didn't look like the person I work with. You know, she didn't look like Linda that never yells at me, you know. And then she had like her, um, it's like a wooden baton type thing, you know. Is it um, made of wood or some other material? It's wood. Okay. 
Um, and what is it used for? Yoga. Yoga, she goes for walks. Okay, and can you describe it to me? Um, it's like, I don't know if you ever see people do yoga. They put it on their shoulders, they stretch, they turn. It looks like a king. And how long is it about? Mm, probably like the, the length of a king, but without that hook. Uh-huh. Okay, can you just show me with your hands the best of your ability? Um, it's probably like, well, it's actually, you know, probably like this thick. And it's probably like this long, because okay. it can go on your shoulder. Okay. You can hold it like this. Um, it's like, I don't let her buy my lunch, you know. I buy my lunch, you know. And so she was like, hmm. That's the first I hear somebody black saving their money. So she's like waving a cane and stuff at me. <laughs> then it's like, I don't know, like after that remark and stuff, and you know, her screaming and yelling, I just snatched it from her, but she kind of like, you know, you like brush somebody off, like, you know, fuck you, you know, like, who cares? You I'm know. taking you seriously. Right. Yes. So I took it and it's like, I just hit her with it. And I did it like a couple more times. On her head? After the first time she fell? And then you continued to hit her on the head with the stick? Yes. Do you know how many times you hit her? That wasn't myself. I don't... I can't count. Were you feeling very angry towards her? I was mad. I was confused. I was angry. Paranoid. It was like, I'm feeling like I never had before. It was like, it felt like she was like my worst enemy, you know? I think I was just like, you know, hit her six times. And then I stood up and I was like, like in total shock. I just sat there. I called her name so many times. I shook her so many times. My intentions weren't to hurt her at all. You know, I stood there for a while. Closed my eyes a couple times, thinking, okay, you know, if I open it, she would just be coming out of the bathroom, sucking through her hair, you know. I rinse off the object. Where? In the kitchen sink. What did it have on it? What were you rinsing off? It had, it was, it was blood. is being um, recorded at uh, Patchway Police Station in Bristol. It is now Tuesday the 3rd of March 2015 and it's exactly 12 midday. Um, I'm DC 3302 Marie Stephen and the other police officer present is DC Mark Luther 2702. Nathan can you give us your full name? Nathan Charles Matthews. Thank you. And your date of birth? The 9th of the 1st, 1987. Thank you. And the other people present in the interview are? Robin Rowland of Half Crossroads Sisters. And this will look appropriate at all. Thank you. So, Nathan, we've had a short break. Um, perhaps if I just...
flag up for the um, recording what this interview is about. It's about the kidnap and murder of Becky Watts. Um, over the last couple of days we've had four recordings. The last was a very short recording and I know you needed to have a break then. I explained to you this morning why we needed to, rather than simply take at face value the written statement that you have given to us last night, and we need to explore what you've told us some more. Um, I know that was difficult for you first thing this morning, but that's what we need to carry on and do and ask you some more questions. Can you rephrase? Um. I don't know what questions you need to ask, but obviously you said something about um, something about Shauna. Can you rephrase it? Mm -hmm. So you can include basically everybody in it and not use her name. Like, do you want me to say I think, yeah, the, the other person? Is it just saying the name? <laughs> I just include everybody in it. Like, yeah. obviously, she's in it. Obviously, okay. we'll be included in it, but include everybody. Don't say her name. Okay. Okay. I'll do my best to avoid using that name where I can. Nathan, okay? I can't make promises. And what I would say to you is that I'm not going to be doing anything to deliberately wind you up or anything like that, okay? Um. But we've obviously been here a long time, and if I make a slip up, it may well be because I'm tired and those things happen, okay? <coughs> Can you tell me then, Nathan, because if we work through what you told us in this written statement, this um, so idea that you, you had... Obviously you obviously, I think you wanted more detail, yeah. was it? Yeah, yeah. Um, Obviously, I sh should be able to go into more detail. Mm -hmm. but remember but the discussion we had before could we begin, though? Huh? Remember the discussion we had before could we begin? I don't know. There are a couple of are ways. you going to have to... Are you going to have to read that statement. No. There are a couple of ways we could get around this. <coughs> obviously, I don't want that to be read to someone. <coughs> <coughs> I don't want to read this out in full again, Nathan, but what I wanted to do <coughs> was get some more detail from you about things that you've said in it. So perhaps if I could pull out some things from what you've told us and ask you to expand on it, tell us a bit more. Does that sound all right? <clears throat> How about if we start with this idea you had about scaring Becky? Tell me about how that started up then, how you got that idea. Uh, I don't know if it was on TV or something like that, but obviously I had a couple of dreams about... I think at this point, I can't keep interrupting, but do you remember the discussions we had before you came into interview? And how, we, how you and I discussed you dealing with the interview? the question again about the the idea that you got and you said it might have been something on TV or you had a dream well, I came up with the idea to scare her because like to try and basically make her more appreciative mm -hmm. of life so she'd be more appreciative for other people she'd be like grateful that you know 
she wasn't harmed or anything like that, or you know, because obviously um, she'd leave things out on the floor of my mum to trip over her, and obviously would talk to her, um, like so saying uh, nasty comments and talk to her like dirt on the floor. And I thought if I was, you know, able to scare her. And obviously, her not be harmed, and obviously be released. Obviously, when she got back, <coughs> she obviously would have been scared and more appreciative of things, as people are. Okay. So tell me what you thought you were going to do. What your plan was. They obviously, stick her in the suitcase. Obviously, um. Obviously, put tape around her mouth so she wouldn't make any noise. And then. I don't want to interrupt you, Nathan, but just one thing it might be difficult to hear this later. Do you reckon you could speak up a bit? Obviously. I, what, um, what the plan was obviously once I got her in the car to make up some up to say to say to Shauna um, obviously I had to leave like to help someone or do something for some up and obviously I was gonna um I was thinking of like a wooded area or whatever to obviously take her back out. To obviously, still have the mask on. And obviously, like, scare her and, you know, say some along the lines of, you know, you've got to start treating people, um, start treating people better, you know, not being a bitch or self centered. Um, and then like make a threat of um, you know, or you know, or this could happen again, or worse, or something like that. And obviously, um, <clears throat> and I hadn't figured out exactly how to obviously walk like obviously walk away after without obviously. I don't know if she'd try and follow, I'm assuming she wouldn't have followed because I'm out of fear, he wouldn't want to follow someone who just obviously has done that. And obviously would have come back. Well, I would have obviously um, chucked away obviously everything first and then come back. And obviously would have acted as normal. That come back to my mum's, obviously acted as normal. So when did you think all of this up? I can't be certain. I'm no good with dates. Okay. I've said this repeatedly and days muddle into other days. I don't have a specific memory yeah. of coming up with it, but I remember thinking about it a couple of times. Just basically trying to think of ways to... Because if she, don't li she won't listen to me about leaving shit on the floor for my mum to trip up. Um, she doesn't listen to her dad about it. Just trying to make, find a way of making her actually listen. Had you had a conversation with her soon before that? I can't. Rem I can't remember when I last saw her. Like I said in the statement, it could have been okay. Wednesday when we went over, or it could have been the Monday before. It depends on when she was in and when she wasn't in. And if she was in, it depends on when she would have come down. Nathan, do you think you want some legal advice at this stage, given that this is going differently than we discussed? Um, I don't know, probably here. Yeah. OK. Um, it's 12.11pm.
What's your full name? Nathaniel Marcus Gannon. What's your sister's name? Like that. Uh, Bray. This is the most important hour of your entire life. And you know what else? We told Bray the same thing. She made the right decision. She told us everything. Every single living and breathing detail. Don't let your little sister take, take the whole hat for this. Tell us your side of the story. Do me, though. Tell us your side of the story. Like, what the hell? Like, your, your little sister killed your dad? Your little I sister, you're going to let her? I didn't see anything. You're going to let her out cry for this whole thing? I didn't do anything, though. Your sister's going to fall for this whole thing because you won't man up and act like the big brother you're supposed to act like. I didn't do anything. How did you feel, Nathan, when he went down? When you looked at him and he's making those noises or whatever, what did that feel like, honestly? To take another man's life? Did it not look real? Would you mind if I did a quick demonstration? Oh, yeah. With Ben, a partner. Absolutely. Use me. You know what I did? Stand up the that way with your hands behind your back. Did you try to jerk away or lunge or something? Try to take. Yeah. Try to take it down. And what happened? I mean, God fell. He fell. You may not feel it yet, but it's physically, you are looking relieved. Because you've not been able to express to anybody your feelings about what happened. Here we go. I just, I just, I just didn't want to do better than the year. I didn't want to lose my dad. Okay, Nathan. I think you're about to fight. You think you should die, you said? Why? <laughs> Deserve it, I guess. Why? <laughs> this whole situation is... I don't even know if I think I deserve to even be a person anymore. Wow. Are you saying that you didn't mean to kill him? angry, but no. You don't want him to die? I didn't want him to die. I wanted him to be scared. I wanted him to be honest. I don't want him to honestly feel like, take me seriously for church. What happened after the first bullet? I just know. I panicked. And he was bleeding and hurting. Yeah. And then he was dying in front of me. And I, and it's just, you know, you, you kill me. And I was just like, no. That's what he said to you. He said you killed me. Just the one, sir. I don't know. I don't know. It, he, I remember him saying it like a thousand times. Yeah. Just, you killed me. You killed me. Why did you kill me?
could have done. No. No prejudices. So what do you got? You know what I'm saying? What do you mean? Nothing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not really watching this stuff. Yeah, I know what's going on. You can watch that. Be that fucking missing person. Sorry, we got a fucking cut in here.
I didn't really think I had a, a urge to kill her. I just wanted her to stop. And, um... What did you want to do to her? What did I want to do to her? Uh, t just to have her stop and, uh... But how would you do it? What did you think in your head about how you would do it? That's, that's what we're trying to get at. When did you first think about treating your mom violently to get what you wanted her to do? Probably in f fourth grade. Okay, there we go. Fourth? Fourth, fourth, fifth and sixth was probably up to that grade. And, and what, what was in your mind that you wanted to do to get her to treat you a certain way? What did you want to do to your mom here? Uh, I wanted her to um, stop um, being angry at me for not knowing how to... Uh, but she wasn't stopping. No, she wasn't stopping. Was she? No. She kept picking on you, she picking. belittling you, mm -hmm. embarrassing you. I mean, that was pretty clear from yesterday. Mm -hmm. It happened in school, too, so I had... So what, did, what was your way of retaliating against her in your mind? What, what were you thinking to do to your mom? Um, I don't know if I was thinking of uh, hurting her. I just wanted her to stop and uh, let, me, 
let me loan it. Um, angry at uh, her for uh, pushing and pushing and pushing on me to, to remember, and I just couldn't remember, and I just wanted her to stop. Uh, but she didn't. But she didn't know. She did stop. So somewhere in the fourth or fifth grade, that sense of helplessness that you had not get, being able to get her to stop, mm -hmm would very likely have pr to produce thoughts of taking back some power and control over your mom to get the bitch to shut up. I mean, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. but Gary, that's what we hear. And that's what one of the things we're looking to get a better understanding of. During, during that thing, I usually took it out on uh, 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 other things instead of hurting her, uh, um, living things, living things, killing, killing animals. Okay. Killing animals. Um, I stabbed a kid one time. Okay. Just stabbed a kid with a knife. Tell me about that. Um, down by uh, Chinook, where I used to go to school, and um, the boy was playing. I stabbed him in the side and uh, didn't kill him. And um, I, I think it must have been about sixth grade, or I think it was uh, seventh grade, and I, I uh, that was at the same time I was, you know, breaking out windows, throwing, throwing rocks at windows at school. Not interested but, in that. But that's what I took my aggression on. I couldn't take it on my mom. I had to take it on my animals and How many and animals kids. did you kill? Only, I killed a lot of birds, but uh, one cat suffocated in an uh, ice chest, mm -hmm. and uh, shot uh, babies at uh, dogs yeah. and to hurt them, and um, threw, uh, well, threw rocks at my brother about that time. I think I was getting out of that, though. You couldn't take your aggression down on your mom. No, I couldn't. But you could think about it. I could think about it, and... and What'd you think? I thought of, of, about hurting her, uh, so she'd sh shut up and uh, leave me alone, and then... How did you think about hurting your mom? Killing her. And how would you do that? Uh, with my hands, or uh, I didn't have no guns or anything, or so I didn't. It had been uh, hands, or. Uh, uh, and then after she was dead, what were you going to do in your head? In my head, I. Uh, I don't know what I would do. I just. just um, I wanted her to stop. One time there, they were going to put me in a, a, a special school. I didn't want that. My dad and my mom were arguing about it all the time. And it was uh, for retarded people, and I didn't, wasn't retarded, I think. So I'd, I was mad at them for wanting to put me away from other kids. And wanting to hurt her, and uh, and uh, uh, hurt her bad. What does that mean, hurt her bad? Help me to understand that. Just uh, be drip so she wouldn't leave me alone, and... How would you do that in your head? 
with my hands, be, be directly with my hands, uh, maybe use a knife. What would you do with the knife? I'd probably stab her with it. Um, she was a, a big problem I had. I mean, I, there was, um, Dad wasn't around that much. He was working all the time, and she was the only one of us in control, and she was constantly trying to get me to uh, do better in school, and and I, I just couldn't do better. I wanted to have her stop, and the only way was to to kill her, or to hurt her bad. Help me explain. Help me understand the knife. Well, the knives were in the drawer. That would be. I used a knife on that. Stabbed that boy, and I used used a knife on her if I wanted to. It's a, a way of killing. And, and okay. Walk me through what you were going to do with the knife in your head to your mother. Cut her throat, so she wouldn't wouldn't uh, stop uh, 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 degrading me and uh, and putting me in. Uh, uh, I, I I I couldn't remember. Things and that was the only way I could think of hurting her to get her to stop. When when did you think about having sex with your mother? When um, fourteen or fifteen, I think. Tell me about that. It's about the same time frame. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd see her out uh, sunbathing and. Uh, Feel that she, you know, she'd be good to have have sex with, and, but she she's my mother, and I never, you know, never, uh, never really. She's the only woman in in my life. I didn't, you know, neighbor one girls, but uh, so to, uh, she, I get uh, fantasies of having sex with her and. And uh, wanting, wanting to, but um, being restricted on that part. Explain to me fantasies and restricted on that part. Your well, words. because if she's my mother, she, it's not right for having sex with your mother. And, and she was, she was always in, in, in. Uh, Two pieces, and and, uh, and she'd come off work. She'd go in the backyard. So it was, a, it was inviting to fantasize with her. She was there sunbathing and tan, and uh, it was it was a uh, something that really uh, intrigued me. It was all women like this. Uh, I, um, they're they're different, and they're. Uh, it, Rouse me to. Uh, I get a, a hard on sometimes, mm -hmm. and it was it was the only time I had an opposite sex in class. Everybody's clothes and stuff like that. This was a woman I was sometimes uh, you know laying down with no no bra on. I mean you couldn't see anything but bare skin. It was a, it was a, it was a turn on in a way, and I enjoyed looking out the window at her when she wasn't watching. Did your mom enjoy that? She didn't even know I was there. No, she, she was down just doing, just sunbathing, and then she'd turn over. And before she turned over, she always fastened her bra and uh, turned over and. Maybe a little bit up here to show because you no tan marks. And I, uh, 
I stared and looked out all the time. And had your fantasies? I had a fantasy, yes. It makes sense to me. Makes mm -hmm. sense that you would have a fantasy. Mm -hmm. Need to have you tell me what that, if, at that, what that was. Just a fantasy of wanting to uh, have sex, to touch her, feel her body, um, have her show me how to have sex. Because um, your mother's teaching a lot of things, you know. It's just, uh, it's just a fantasy. It's something she wouldn't do it, but it's. What would in your fantasy? What would your mom have you do to her? Have me do to her? Uh, my fantasy would be to. Uh, and explore to uh, find the different things what a woman has, uh, uh, girls have that guys don't have. Show me how to have sex, good sex. Uh, what, you know, what, what the woman wants and uh, feel every bit of her body to, to uh, enjoy a, a, a woman and have sex with her. But at the same time in your life, and listen carefully to this, mm -hmm. um, at the same time in your life, you also hate your mom for what she's doing to you. Yes. So how are those thoughts and fantasies colliding together? Because we know that that happens. Mm -hmm. um, how are they colliding together in your head? And gliding together in my head when, there, when she was just laying down there, she wasn't. She was more of a s sex object than a than a mother, and more of the fantasies of having sex with her, and nothing to have and uh, to kill her. Two different uh, things. When she was always she, Dr. Doctor Jekyll Clyde, when she's down there, she's a, a sex fantasy, sex object. When she's up there uh, trying to get me to read, and she's uh, uh, the other side of uh, uh, something, uh, something I hated. I loved the part of her being a sex object, but I didn't like the part of her being a mother and uh, working with me as trying to help me uh, in reading and and. I like the sex part better than I like the the mother that was always trying to hurt uh, be little me and because uh, I wasn't uh, I wasn't uh, I wasn't learning.